There we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to December 6th edition live stream episode 100 and something. We passed our 100th and we didn't even do anything about it because we're just so focused on the next week. So whatever. Good morning, Michael. How's it going today? Good. You just surprised me that it was our 100th and I didn't even remember that I should have always looked at that. Um, yeah, I, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. I don't think this is the one, but but uh, yeah, today is December 6th. We've got a tips and tricks episode planned, but before we get to that, there's a little bit of Bluebeam news. So well, Bluebeam is an amazing company and I'm a little jealous right now because they are going to take off. The whole company is going to shut down from December 17th to January 2nd, right? For the holidays. That means if you're looking at getting more licensing or if you have anything that you need squared away with Bluebeam, you need to do it in the next 10 days, right? So if you're looking at getting more licensing, if you're looking at converting to subscription, if you're looking at doing anything, get ahead of that because you don't have the whole month of December. Mm -hmm. um, to answer your question, Liz, tech support, if you are partnered with ATG or even if you're not, I would say you can still reach out and we can try to facilitate your needs if you need any help with technical issues um, as much as we can, right? So mm -hmm. if that's something you do need and we are not your reseller, um, feel free to still reach out to us. We do have a, a around a seven minute, 10 minute response time, which six is minute. great. Yeah, six minute. Okay. We're down to six minutes right now. One up me. Yeah, you're right. My, I'm sorry. So six minute response time um, with at least an hour guarantee. So if you mm -hmm. do have some technical questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we'll fill that void for you in the meantime. Even though we're not your reseller, that typically comes free just purchasing your software solutions through ATG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so support, all that stuff is probably going to shut down. So just giving you the heads up. Um, yeah, good for them. That's awesome. You know, that's, it's amazing to see the company uh, do something like that, but it's going to cause a little bit of a headache for some of their customers. And that's why we wanted to, you know, take the minute to let you be aware, because this is the time of year where firms are looking at like, Hey, I've got extra money to spend, or I've got new people coming in over the winter. I should probably get more licenses and that's all going to be uh, tricky. Mm -hmm. um, also, there is going to be a new window for upgrades. So if you didn't pay attention to all the things we we're telling you about with getting maintenance, making sure you have that, um, that window is going to open back up. You will be still be able to trade in your old licenses for the subscription at a discount. Don't know the whole details yet, but it will be um, in, in January sometime. Also, if you're still on 19 or older, that clock is still ticking. You've got till March 21st, which is less than four months away um, before your studio goes away. So there we go. I think we got the housekeeping out of the way. Should we do some tips and tricks? I think we should. Um, let me go back and look. Yeah, so we are at 109 videos. So it was two times ago because I think it was 108 videos. Yeah. I just wanted to know when, you know me, I went and looked. Well, so 109. At 108, it was because there was eight random videos we did. We were at 100. So what, two weeks ago? That's so, awesome. Happy birthday to MCR. MCR. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a big milestone. Thank you all for being a part of this. I know some of you have been to almost all of them, if not all of them, and a lot of you um, hung around and, and watched our goofy butts talk about Bluebeam all day. So <laughs> thank you so much for being a part of this. Happy anniversary and happy birthday to you as well, because you are certainly part of this community and you are why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. That's so a hundred hours. 100 hours of you and i talking Woo. and everyone else that has joined well so. let's just keep on going yes until Alrighty. they shut us down we got a couple questions in here which is also going to be we're going to turn them into tips how about that that's um, fine with me you shoot me the questions but let's actually you know reiterate that this is all about you the community mm -hmm. um so feel free to ask any questions you have along the way and stop us right we do mm -hmm. have a topic mm -hmm. Um, but this is really meant to get any questions asked for free um, and to have the community where Jason and I can't answer or maybe the community can answer in even a better way than we can because we're mm -hmm. definitely not the leading experts to any means um, to help facilitate any question answering. Um, so 
ask away. That's what this has always been meant for um, at any point. So in the future, now, um, but let's go and see. All right. So our first two tips are going to be related to studio. Question from Sheldon. Is there a way to keep studio logged in? Because every time it logs in, they have to, you have, every time you shut down review, you got to re-log in. So that's probably an older version is what I would think is your issue because older review um, didn't have the ability to have the check selection. Mm-hmm. Um, well, no, it had the check selection, but the check selection didn't work. That was what happened. So when you were to sign in, oh man, I did it again. There's a, there was 19 dot something, I think that, that gave you that um, capability. Yeah, it had like a checkbox and it never worked or did work. And then it didn't work for a while. And then after that, they just removed the checkbox and it gave you this sign in. So um, it should automatically keep you signed in. Um, When you start switching to review 21, you'll get this new update that says use your credentials on sign in too. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so log back in there. Oh, okay. Because our second tip is about studio session notifications. Great. Um, The alert attendee function, how does it really work? And did you know that you can do such a thing? So um, there's some settings in there that can be adjusted per Liz, Mm -hmm. but default settings. um, If you're in a studio session, you can alert somebody who may not, you know, be on the meeting if you're doing a Zoom call or you're on a speakerphone or whatever, or where it's, you're there across the globe and they're working on a project uh, while you're asleep. You can notify somebody of something that they've done or something that you've done. So I can't do this from my iPad. So you're going to have to join to alert me. Okie dokie. Because there's no like right click way too many windows open right now and there's no button what's this yeah button? the notifying from the ipad is tricky is there a gonna... button for it um i don't think there is unless it's i keep thinking macbook where it's two buttons down and then you click or two fingers down. no it's not like oh two fingers down. i didn't think about that where is my i just opened review there we nope. Go. nope 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 because double Denied. click is the comment. If I hold it down, like my things are cut, copy, delete, add to my tools, set as default, invert, or capture. Hmm. Anyways, okay. So I'm in that same session that you're in, and I'm going to go create a quick markup, and I'm going to notify you. So we're going to be still looking at your screen, but you'll be able, able to see um exactly what's going on there yes when i alert you of this yeah when he decides to alert me i'll see an update here um for whatever he's going to go through and alert me for so he's adding a cloud i will be alerted in here um how do you alert people while he's going through and doing that is when you've made a markup i know this is really busy i'm sorry folks done a lot of demos uh but what you can go through here and do um is make a markup And then from here, you can always select that markup, right click and alert attendee, and you'll choose from the list of attendees that are here. So once that is then alerted, you can select this alert and you can go through and not go through. It brings you to where that alert was made for. Now, if we're talking about like updates alerts, you can manage notifications as well for specific sessions. Um, and projects, but it's just sessions if you do not have Studio Prime. Um, Because if you go through and go to projects and try to remanage your projects through studio.bluebeam.com, it's going to push you to their older site, which doesn't let you manage projects. But for notifications, you can at least go through and manage them here. Um... And the studio sign-in alert, yes, 20.2.6. Thank you, Alex, for that update. Um, Jason, do you have a link to where updates are? Yep, 
Oh, I'm on it. And then that's that'll let you know what happened during those revisions of updates. Um, but yeah, alerts, you can adjust how you get alerted, like turning no, turning off the notification email thing. Oh, yep. Okay, yep. As I was talking about that. Um, I, I believe the question from who was it that asked the alert? Who was so the asked alert? Here. That was Jill. Jill. So I believe the question from Jill was the notifications here versus the email notifications. Um, let me scroll back down. Do you have to be in the same session to be notified? So good question. Um, um, yes, because, well. Well, your email has to be there, right? I mean, you, you won't get notified. Let's say I'm in a different one, like, you know, ATG here, this one. I won't get notified here, but I will once I'm in the session, unless you, you have notification emails. When you go to notify people, you can only choose from a list of people who have already attended that session. They don't have Correct. to be logged in. don't have to be at the same time, but they have to be a part of that session. Correct. It gets a little tricky. Um, no, Liz, you're not the only one that reads release notes. I put that link in the chat. You can go review the history. There's a lot of good stuff there. And it also proves the value of, you know, maintenance and subscriptions and all those things too. I know people always say um, when I'm in demos and having conversations about Blue Beam, well, why, why do we upgrade? What's the purpose of upgrading? Um, go through this list, right? This is a very long list of things that have been happening um, that are updates. I think what's been lost in translation, but I think it's, the best part about review is that they don't do release updates by year, right? Because the only downside of that now is other folks are always questioning, well, when's the new one coming out? We're paying mm -hmm. consistently for it. Well, they don't do that. They give you the latest updates and bug fixes immediately versus waiting until the next release of that edition, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess it's a catch-22. People are always going to be upset about... Um, different things but that's something that always bugged me was well they they did switch from year releases and just kept 20 and then all of these fixes from here up is what happened from that version um, review 21 though there was like a bug fix i think that was it right when 21 do they have 21 here no um not. you can go to the top jump to a <laughs> version yeah okay sneaky because review 21's had a didn't they have a dot one already? No. Mm -mm. But yeah. Um, they did right when it came out because it fixed something. But yeah. Yeah. So this was the iteration of Bluebeam Cloud and then their fixes to the actual solution. And they added the plus, but they still haven't updated. They need to create an update because with new version of Review 21 pushing your tool sets to the cloud, there is no repush from here. Correct. And that was one of the tips that I wanted to mention. So okay. um, before you go to Review 21, before you go there, clean up your tool chests. Get rid of all the junk, all the things you've kept. Make sure they're labeled right. Make sure they're set up right the way that you like them. Because when you transition, you will have the option to automatically push your tools over to the Bluebeam Cloud, which is amazing. However, that's a one-time sync. Mm -hmm. The next time you do it, you have to manually export and import, or you have to create from scratch from Bluebeam Cloud. That's not the best use of your time, right? So if you spend the time, clean up tool chest first, then go to Review 21, you'll find that both Review 21 and Bluebeam Cloud will work better. So solid tip there. Um, as far as doing a test on Review 21, um, you can install them side by side, right? So if you are, you know, like Bruce is looking at doing some testing on the IT side and knowing the backend support, you can um, have them on the same computer. I don't know how that works as far as upgrading though. Can you upgrade one of your licenses and keep the rest no so you have to have your whole license so whatever your license if you were on maintenance prior right 
I mean, I guess you could purchase a new single one, but you wouldn't want to do that. So if you're on maintenance prior, it's your whole purchase license of that maintenance. So if you had a hundred extreme, you're upgrading all hundred of extreme to the new license structure. Um, so if you're going to do that, you probably want to do side by side with the trial version. Um, David asked, uh, they're discussing in U chapter two, which is Troy's um, forms page that there are issues with 21. And yeah, I would suspect um, that there's probably some bugs for this new, uh, the new version as well, just because also it's single sign on, right? I could imagine if people are using the single sign on feature, I would love to know those bugs too. Mm -hmm. um, so that we can let people know as well, just because we're not, I don't use the single sign on feature here because it's my single desktop, but maybe Jason has one. I guess I use my, not really my iPad, but anyways, I digress. Um, next one is, I mean, I found a new bug this morning, Dave. Yep. See, so new bug, bugs all over. Um, hopefully they push out an update here. I but know they're more good than bad. More good. Yeah. Than bad. I know they were focused on the cloud portion, but I'm not going to speak for them. Um, especially with the new cloud portion where you have the plus button now, which they didn't have before, um, to add your tool set. So blue beam, I know this was a question one at one point. Um, is, is it blue cloud here? Is app.blue.com. Um, that I, I think we didn't answer or we answered it saying that we didn't know the answer to this and someone got upset, but that's fine. Um, if you, if you ever have a question, feel free to email us after, or, um, put it in the comments. If you rate us below a five, you may get an email from me asking a question of, well, what can we do better? And if you're going to give us below a five rating at the end, that's okay. We're totally okay with it, but just let us know why we're not five. Um, so from in here, if I go to my, what was it? it? It wasn't the beta one. It was the demo one. Okay. So under your drawings, when you go and get ready to mark up your PDFs, they now added the plus symbol, which it wasn't here at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'd love to know if anyone knows this, but how do I go to my older revisions like they used to have in drawings? So community, if you know, please let me know. Um, from here, so you have the tool chest. Now they added this one, which is create your tool set here or upload one. So maybe this is their thought process. Because again, right, what Jason was saying, you could first, it's the first snapshot to push them into the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. The second one would be, well, you've already done it. How do I add new ones? Am I going to have to manually add them each time? Mm. Well, I, I contacted Bluebeam directly for that one because they did have a screenshot that showed a button saying send tools to cloud. Yeah, and I was they like, used to. Like, where support. is this button? And they're like, yeah. oh, that's only there the first time. Like, well, it would be kind of handy to have. So they confirm you do have to export and upload. What? Yeah, yes. Chris, I agree with you. They got to fix that. But, you know... Uh, there's a lot of work that went into this and making it all work. So like, it's not that big of a deal, but yeah, I, they'll want to get that fixed. They will want to get that fixed. Like I also would love for them to be able to push and pull the studio projects is still mind boggling, but you know, it's, I guess, let me rephrase that. It's just a little frustrating because some people are going to use review. That's not specific to CDs being completed, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be able to push and pull docs from projects into sessions. Mm -hmm. but maybe that's why they have like maybe their intention is to use third-party apps because i saw this the other day if you add there is also a sync button so if you use like a third-party hmm, integration there's like a sync button i was looking at the support for it and you can sync so maybe that's their intention maybe that's why when the open api is there you know people build in built-in sync capabilities to wherever they're stored i don't know just a thought hmm. okay any other questions i think that's definitely going to be one of those open api things that'll get fixed real quick mm-hmm yeah, because that's one of the things like that would bug me 
Well, I have something here that I want it to update. I don't want to have to download each time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's next? Um, Integrations here are these ones. Yeah. And there are some new ones that, you know, are out there and there will be some more coming, you know, that API is going to open up and it's going to be interesting. Um, so I think Jill may have found a bug um, going back to the alerting an attendee. If you have multiple sets open within the same session, the alert notification panel remains open when moving between the sets. So the sets that um, they see in the architectural set will remain when they switch to an electrical set. So your notifications are per, are they per session or are they per? I think it's per session. Yeah, it doesn't care what file you're in. The yeah, overall it's, session. Yeah. It's the studio session. Yeah. Right. Which that would be a good preference if that's available, but then you would open yourself up to the opportunity to miss them. Right. So if you've maybe you, you don't care about the electrical plans, but maybe there is something that does affect architectural or another uh, discipline, you'd want to have it be in there. But yeah, but, but I mean, you can. That if, part is a tip that I wanted to mention too. You can clear them out. I'm guilty of this one. Right click, yeah. So right click dismiss or mark as unread. But the the thing with the notifications is the purpose is to notify somebody and address an issue. And then from there, right, you are dismissing it. It is gone. Um, because it does bring you to where it needs you to go. Cause it, it's essentially saying, Hey Jason, since we're not on a phone call, I'm alerting you to this. Can you please address this issue, right? So I'm alerted, and then I'm going to reply with whatever. Mm -hmm. I always use hello. Um, and then now I can look from here or chat, right? And then dismiss. Ooh, Bye. that's a... That's a good tip, Alex. So Alex tries to have studio users use a company name or a person name so they can easily search their markups list rather than notifications. Notifications mm. is not all that helpful when you have a hundred of them sitting in there. Absolutely. So like clean them up when you are done taking a look at them. Um, but yeah, you can also filter by the person if you enable that column. Um, is there a way to add username or initials yeah, automatically? Right yeah, that's hidden in there, right? So if you go to your markups list and go to columns, um, there's one in there for author. Right there, boom. But this is the name itself of the user. So be aware of that. You can change this at any point too. Mm -hmm. um, it's studio.bluebeam.com if I'm right. I always change mine in the preferences. You can can you change too. it from here? Go up to review. Oh, but yeah, it's pulling from a different user ID though, right? Like mm. this is user, I believe, hold on. Yeah, because Joe Demo is completely different. Yeah, because this user ID is from this um, area. Hold on, let me sign in. So if you go into studio.bluebeam.com, if you don't have Prime, you're not going to see this. Let me go to the legacy one. <laughs> In the Wayback Machine. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was looking the other day because I'm trying to figure out box integration into Bluebeam review. And they don't Google. Yeah. So studio integrations. They don't have their studio uh, blue beam. I know rabbit hole. I'm sorry, but they used to list studio prime. There you go. <laughs> Google brain fart. Um, they don't list studio prime anymore. Um, they had like a basic search in blue beam that showed who they integrated with. Mm -hmm. They no longer show it on their website. Oh, see, what's up with that? I missed that. 
Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what's happening because I was trying to figure out how do you integrate box into like, do you have to have studio prime to integrate it into studio sessions or is there just no integration at all? Cause you can go to here in preferences and go to, um, where was it here and get your DMS type for your location. They have SharePoint, but they don't have box. And I'm not talking about Dropbox. I'm talking about box. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, is it just that they have to go to open and then go to their desktop, you know, connector of box to go to here. Right. Like, is that. No, I think it's better than that. I hope. Um, but I can't find anything. That's what was bugging me. Anyways, so going back to here, classic mode, this is what you would see if you go to studio.bluebeam.com. Your profile here, this is your name. So bring this down here. You can change this because this is going to be the author. So your question of is it going to automatically show initials and whatnot, you can go here and then have the author be that. Ta-da! Joe Demo is a super user. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Joe Demo is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Haven't definitely. seen the Magic U Chapter 2. I know. I'm sorry. I'm slacking. Hey, He's I working told... on his belt under a different name. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Which brings me to another tip. There are other resources to get tips. Yep. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So uh, U Chapter 2 got some mm -hmm. great tips. Liz Larson's got a fantastic blog full of tips too, um, which was up in the chat and I will go find it and repost it. I'm sure she can repost it quick. Yeah. Look at that. She did. With she the quickness. Boom. <laughs> I mean, the name's pretty original, so it's hard to forget. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for other ways to learn, you know, outside of MCR and outside of just random Google searches, you know, go to, uh, um, go to you chapter two, go to Liz Larson's blog, bookmark those things, have them handy. They are updated frequently. There are, uh, there is a community page over at you chapter two, which you can be a part of. Um, you know, it's all about helping each other get better with the software. Um, you know, figure out some of these things because we all sort of have a voice in this stuff, right? We can make recommendations. We, you know, you can, if you, uh, encounter an issue you can get a hold of our support let them know like we've got a a red phone line to to blue beam so they can uh help them uh be aware of these issues before that they might not even know about so um all about sharing the love there i don't know how long it takes to change my name but it doesn't change i've done it because i've trained a client who put something that they shouldn't have as their name um and it doesn't this is the authorship of the markup, but it doesn't reauthenticate the email assigned to it. Right. Yeah. Liz says we're all busy. Ain't nobody got time for life story on a blog post. If you've, uh, you know, tried looking up a recipe anytime soon oh, or anytime recently, oh man, that drives me crazy. <laughs> Where you get, it was a sunny fall day and this particular brand of butter brought me joy. And you, yeah, just get to it. Yeah, and that's the one thing, too, in terms of going through and looking at blogs. That's something that we try to do here, at least with some of my blogs, too, that I post, right, is not a whole story, but content. Get it out quick. Mm -hmm. um, Joe, I bet Joe doesn't have his own website. No. Bookmark that one, too. There you go. Um, TMI. Yeah. Okay. So now what about tips? What are some of our famous tips, um, Jason, that you have, or do you want me to go? It's up to you. Well, you um, kind of just teased on it right there is cleaning up your file access. This is something ooh. that I learned from early MCRs because I never used to pin stuff and I never used to have everything organized. And I was always going through that recents thing. So two tips built in there. Recents, you can, doesn't have to be recents. You can change a calendar to by folder and most accessed and access history. So a lot of people don't know about that one. Super handy. Like, when did I get into this? Boom. Super easy. And then also go up to the top. You can clear it too. Yeah. Pin your stuff. 
So um, back when I was doing more tech work here at ATG, I was constantly referring to like the national CAD standards or any file that you would need to get a hold of frequently, but maybe not every day. So um, pin those things. So if you've got like a, a phone list for work or specifications that you're working on or a particular project, you know, you're going to be on for a while, um, pin them, make folders, make your life easier so you can get there faster. Yeah. And I agree. So pinning them. So how, how do you pin them? If I go by date, you can just either pin to the right. Um, just be aware when you pin PDFs, what they do is right click pin file. They will pin to their native folder structure. Um, so as you see me hover over this it says user, my username documents, wherever it lives, it pins to its folder. Um, so if you wanted files, let's say you're working on a project that did not live in the same folder structure together, they have these things called pin to category. So either you create your own categories or you create a new one and those live down here. So they na will natively save in their pin folder, which is great because if I click the folder, it opens up the folder or hey, I don't care about it living in the folder. I need these 10 files together um, and they don't live in the same folder on Windows Explorer, File Explorer, sorry. Um, you use pin the category for those. Magical. You can also create a quick hyperlink too, which is pretty cool. But anyways, we'll talk about it another time. Um, what else? You're, you're looking through the chat. Yeah, so- Now that you have brand new eyes. Mm, um change your sort quick hmm not sure what that one was referring to uh you're sorting yeah here oh, okay i'm assuming oh yeah i hit the folder next to pinned yeah so that's a frequently underutilized tool i think what do you guys think in the chat you guys use your file access or do you ignore it completely hit and miss Use it all the time. Yeah, there's good stuff there. All right, another tip. So I was doing a demo a couple last week, week before. Whoa, it, demo world. I know. I don't if do demos Jason, that often. Yeah, so, if you get Jason Gnarly on a demo, you... It's a, it's a special be, day or Michael's yeah. sick. <laughs> no. <laughs> either way uh, i went through then and i changed profiles and one of the people on the other end of the demo was like wait what was that because they had used it before they were just trying to show the decision makers the tool so profiles if you're not using profiles they're amazing yep so profiles are, are here you got a few in there holy moly yeah it's training and i put one say like delete and i haven't deleted it yeah you know me well, go delete it. Let's show that tip. How to okay. clean up your stuff. <laughs> two, we'll get uh, two birds stoned at one time here, right? Um, there we go. Oh, you posted something. So there was a thing about the sticky. Liz was saying um, there's a sticky. I kind of want to keep delete this one turn off the sticky the highlight by default so that is i'm assuming so correct me if i'm wrong was the vector pdfs so the difference between raster and vector pdfs is that enrichment of data versus ragged lines which would be pixelized dpi mm -hmm. dependent um for your pdfs and if you can you can select text like this and sometimes you're not trying to select the text because see how it's already populating that text selection right here because you're probably like mike what are you pointing to I'm not pointing to anything it's right here um you'll see it switch and if you hold control it keeps it in the native just drawing method mm -hmm. i and i was right okay I i'm annoyed by that one frequently so good good tip there um it is in the preferences where you can you can turn that off um oh david that's a good tip there the lasso select tool oh so that's one i don't use very often mainly because my hatred for it in autocad 
So I kind of turn it off everywhere. If I'm, you know, I don't use Photoshop anymore, but when I did then perfect, great use for it. But are we talking about the, the select all? No, the, the lasso mode in review. There's a, what's the lasso mode in here? When you're, so, Oh, here we yeah. go. Oh, what would we use this for? Nothing. You would oh. use it for if you if you had a bunch of call outs and markups and already done there and you need to select them, you can be more uh, finicky or more um, targeted. There you go. Precise. Yeah, maybe there's the word. Maybe I'm trying to not select this one. There we go. Yeah, perfect. So David learned that from Vince. We learned that from David. So thanks, Vince, for showing David. So he went back and showed everybody today. So awesome. The other one was this, which I was learning with counts, right? So hello. Maybe I'm trying to make a count that is hello with a shape because you have to select in specific order so that you're not selecting this. But if you do this, select all, it doesn't matter which order you group these in. magic oh it does matter hmm maybe it's because i selected it first i swear one time it didn't matter and maybe that's just because the select did matter okay Hold oh up. maybe i had to do it over this one let me group it that way yeah that's why it's because i right clicked on the text but it does matter when you do it this way which is select wait select select then no you can't so that's why yeah so select select grouping then it's the text yeah okay so i, I need you to test alex's tip here what holding right click to a crossing window to select while you're on the hand tool so if you're on your pan tool your hand tool pan whatever oh there you, you go I bet I never look at this, but I always see this. Yeah. Yeah. Things you learn. Which should also be a tip on its own. That keyboard shortcut, if you don't know how to get to it quickly, um, go to help. It's hiding right there. Don't print it out, please. Yeah, don't print it out. It's right here. Uh, the color of the little grippy things tells you which markup is the primary markup. In the group. In the group. Oh, okay. So if I do oh. this one, what's the color change to? The nodes, I think that's what, or control points is what they call them. Well, how does it, so if I do this one, They're still the same. Okay, let me ungroup it, do the opposite. Group. Hmm. Oh, you're meaning the sequence of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yellow versus green. Okay. Interesting. That kind of is the same thing with counts, too, by the way. So if you ever needed a delete counts and here you'll see the yellow versus green so if you're trying to delete a specific count and you click on the node that's the count selected you can multi-select by the way and delete these ones but the yellow one is when you go and say delete from group it's those ones So a lot of things have similarities within <clears throat> review, which is cool. <laughs> or you can oh, use you the could lasso. lasso them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Jokes well on done. me. Um, all righty. So what other things do you have, Mr. Artley? Hmm. I, I have... like the auto size text box is oh. definitely a preference setting for me. Great one. 
Yes. So if you go to your tools, you have auto size text box and reuse your tools so that you're automatically not having to go back and reselect from your markups, uh, your tool sets. Sorry. Um, you can automatically replace it if you needed to, or just hit escape to get out of it. Right. Otherwise, if reuse is not on, then you select it. Like if I'm placing this division 10, then I need to place another one. Um, it will leave the command if you don't have reuse. Otherwise, it keeps you in the command. Can you change the default width of a text? I don't know the answer to that. Does anyone know if you can? Um, Cause I, isn't it a drag and click to this text? So like, this is a drag and click, right? It's not a place. I guess if you made a place, a size would be maybe a tool set. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. Toggle the the reuse They're from reused. the bottom from the status bar. That was oh, also yeah. a tip. Turn that thing on and off because there are things in there like snap to grid and snap to content that um, people neglect. Um, so, Alex, if you don't see this bar, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. If you don't see this bar, <laughs> then just don't lose your thought. Just you keep go. repeating it. Got it. Um, yeah, so down here, right? So your your navigation or your status bar, if they get removed, you can always add them back. There you go. Back to you, Jason. Alex put a tip in the chat that I didn't know, and I'm curious if you knew it. Draw an ellipse, but hold down the alt key. I only knew that for the arc, so I don't know what it does for the ellipse. Okay, try so it. So what is this? So draw an ellipse. So it's not like the arc where you have to press it from the toolbar. You just need to draw it first because no, there's just, the three-pointed arc. Okay, draw an ellipse. Okay, now draw another one. But in this time, hold down the alt key. Before I place it? Before you place it. It oh. draws it from the center, so now you get perfect circles. I didn't know you could do perfect circles. Yep. Bravo. Mind blown. Bravo, Alex. That's kind of almost the same thing with this, except you have to have the alt, right? And then you place it. So arc before you place it, holding alt. Is it just press alt? It's actually just press. You don't even have to hold it. So just before you place it, press alt. No, you do have to hold it. Press. So I'm holding alt, first click, releasing alt. And then I do my other points. There you go. Oh. Sneaky, you can sneaky. hold shift to get perfect circles too. Let's see. Holding shift. Oh, oh but yeah. it draws it from the corner. The corner. Whoa. Liz learned too. Alex, you win a gold star. Better call up Troy. See if Troy knows this, knows this one. Um, next one is similar to double clicking the format painter. So what does the double clicking the format painter do? Double, wait, double click the format painter. <laughs> What'd that do? Keeps it toggled. Oh, oh so you can do multiple. Does that work in Word? Yeah. It does? Oh, boy. Cool. Cool. I've been craving pizza, and your pictures aren't helping. Although I don't want brick pizza. That's gross. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What is that? Like layers of cheese for brick pizza? Wonder if that works, da, 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 but it sure does. Okay. So <clears throat> a couple of other things that I always love to show is moving um, text around for like dimensions and stuff, just because that typically uh, comes into play when you have a string or even like an area, but you can go through and let me set the scale. I think it's 330 seconds on this one. Yeah. So I'll set the scale of 330 seconds here, apply. And as you're going through and making your dimensions, so I'll go and add a dimension string here, boom, or even we'll do an area as well because this follow suits with the area, but the area doesn't have like um, 
the option to have a leader that I know of. So if anyone knows, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Are you not snapping the content there? So I, so you I didn't have it. Oh, yeah, it I'll... is. It's just, it was, I think it was snapping to multiple areas. So yeah, see, cause like, there's no hard point in intersections, which always frustrates me. If someone knows how to fix that, that'd be great. Um, but so from here, what I can do is I can select the text, but don't hover over the node of the text, um, the red, the yellow node. You then hover over the text itself, holding shift, left click and select, and you can move this text out. They they hid that one real well, didn't they? Yeah. Because, yeah, for those CAD users or Revit users or whatever, why wouldn't you just click on the grip and move it? So, yeah. Right click yeah, and reset. Yep. And I wonder if you right click this one, because this doesn't give you a leader. No. Oh. No. Hmm. Bummer. Reset caption position. Yeah, but it doesn't give me like, you uh, know. It, yeah. Something like that. Wouldn't that be nice? All righty. Okay. Well, that was kind of one, one other one I wanted to mention is holding down shift to move the area text out because that one's frustrating. I'll forget it. I still forget it. Like you end up, it seems so logical to click on the text to drag it down. Mm -hmm. nope. yeah nope i would agree and then the other one would be importing and exporting markups um from one set to the next so just be aware you do have that option of going to markups importing or exporting you can also do a just a selection if you ever needed to from one to the next so you could do a control c or i learned it the other day from you all control, control shift, shift v. v yeah um, that's a good one. Cause that qu question comes up a lot. Like, okay, well, what do I do if I'm comparing an old set of drawings to a new set of drawings that I've already marked up? Well, you can export those markups and that's a forgotten about or under the radar functionality, um, that I think counts as a tip. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Alex had one, which is preferences, general spelling, Inc enable check, include uppercase upper words. words you don't have it checked oh wow yeah that's a good one because a lot of the stuff that we work on is uppercase right um in the technical setting should be checked by default absolutely yeah typing is hard um ooh, got you that's a good one liz too the previous view button this is one that i learned from michael a while ago yeah um View previous, zoom previous, whatever. Um, going back to where you were, there's a little button there. Or you can do alt left. Alt left, yeah. Or alt right. But then that opens up a whole other political thing. Yeah, so this um, is going to go back to where you were command-wise. So just like your last latest point. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of going to section views, how about making that section bubble there automatically take me to that view? Yeah. So this just be aware. Um, this is a, an extreme feature. If you're in review 20, um, if you were on maintenance and move to review 21, you will have this feature in complete. And I maybe, is it core now too? I think it's just complete. I think it's complete. You can go and look at the list. Um, that's what I've been having folks do just because it's everything's changed around. And once they once review 20 is no longer sold, I'll then remember. I will then learn the new way. Other, right. For right now, I'm just pointing people to the list and go look. Um, so if I go here and hit new, I go and add my files. So I'm going to add my open file because it's just a singular one. And then from here, you can do a page region of data or page label for this specific one. I'm going to grab data that's already on my PDF set. And what I'm doing is having review search for this number and every single same instance on each page for this number. So if I go through to here. I can hit generate. 
It's saying, hey, I'm going to look at all these pages, same location for this number. And then everywhere that number is placed, I'm going to create a hyperlink to those locations. So if I hit settings, you can look for a filter if you ever wanted to. Also link options here. I have my appearance selected. The reason being is that it is going to show yellow because sometimes people are like, did it really even happen when I do demos? Yes, people even ask that. So I'd show them that it actually did happen. So then I go to here and then I hit run. It's going to create 94 hyperlinks. And now I can go and look and there are my hyperlinks. It does it in other places too, which is great. Um, but then it brings me to that sheet. Ta-da. All right, we got about eight minutes left. Got a good one from Liz put in there about taking their windows out of the Bluebeam interface, out of the re review interface. So like moving your markups list to another screen or undocking. Oh, the panels. Their panels. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you meant like, yeah, you can tab out. Um, but yes, so you can go through and change. The toolbars are docked permanently. However, the panels permanently being in the UI user interface, mm. um, but saved to the profile, but also saved to the profile is your panels. Your panels are the icons that have items in them like spaces. So if you wanted your properties to go out to a second screen, you can left click, hold and drag or right click, attach and detach. And it will remember where you detach them. They also can dock within one another. That's a highly under, underutilized thing. And I kind of get it because I want more real estate, not less. But you can dock them if you ever wanted to. Um, as they're dragged out, though, you can bring these to a second screen. It will remember the second screen. So if you do have two screens and you give your profile to someone else, it'll remember the placement upon opening that profile. However, if they do not have a second screen, it defaults to the center. Hmm. So wait a minute. Alex is saying you can split them if you hover them over the side. Nice if you have a large screen. Hover it. Hover oh, it yeah. It. Yeah, so you were saying like if you go here, if you have a secondary screen and you want to have both these. Oh, there you go. No, not that's not what he was referring to. Oh, I'm wrong. Interesting. Hover it over the left and you'll see the four arrows that pop up. Yeah, we showed the docking. Hmm. That's an interesting thought, Isaac. Setting up your tablet as a fourth screen and drag your tool chest over there and then just switch tools by touch. Like a little stream deck. That'd be worth uh, playing with. Yeah, Alex, you're talking about the docking, right? Within. Yes, but vertically. Yeah. yeah, it's either or. You're just, and you could do four, right? Because there's quadrants here. Mm. So... Steals less space. Interesting. Um, okay. That was the other one. That was the other one. All right. We got about five minutes left. Um, I should have written these down because we've, we, we've done a few of these tips and tricks ones, but every time there's something new. And today was great because we've got bonus ones um, from the community, which we love as always. Yep. And as always, feel free to ask any questions you have um, within using review. The other one I would definitely take note about is your line weights. <clears throat> so you can go through mm. and disable these. Again, vector versus raster PDFs are important to know for this one as well. Um, but you can disable your line weights if you ever wanted to go through and disable them. Mm -hmm. It's also handy, but it's also a nightmare. So for those in the support world, Get ready for that one because it comes up often. I right. printed from AutoCAD and it doesn't look the same as it does in review. <coughs> Did you toggle it off? Oh, oops. oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, um sketch to scale. Yeah. So this is something I always used to stay away from. Your PDF does need to be calibrated, but your orange color icons of uh, measurements allow you to sketch at that scale. <coughs> 
Mm -hmm. So if you needed to draw a table or a column or something at a certain, um, certain scale, you have that capability. Um, uh, select tool by pushing something. Yeah. So down here in the bottom, you have your pan. So this is in your navigation bar. Cause this is your status bar, right? Correct. Okay. Thanks. Um, so it is your pan or your select, which is V. So the hot key for that is V or shift V for switching between those, or you can stay in pan. And we learned this today, right? Click. Mm -hmm. Boom. There you go. Mind blown. There you go. See, I think, I think I learned something today. Michael, I learned, learned that. something today. Yeah. Liz learned I learn every today. time I'm here. Yeah. That's the beauty of what we're doing. Um, yeah, these are, these are fun. Um, thanks everybody for, for pitching in there. Um, oh wait, Doug's got one. Hold your center button on your mouse, the wheel to move a drawing without moving the markups. Hmm. So I'm, I'm pressing it in, but we're saying. I missed it. Maybe if we select. No, move the drawing, but not the mark. Oh, so you're, you're, I don't know. Panning. Maybe a wide select. Hover yeah. over the markup. Hover over the markup. And then middle button click. Hmm, it doesn't work for me. Okay. Interesting. If you just it'll if you just move a sheet with the left button, you'll move the markup. Oh, he's saying select it. Okay. Yeah. So select it, left click, hold, and you can move the markup, maybe. Liz is gonna be putting some tips and tricks on her YouTube later, so check out her website for a handy link there. There you go. We also have an a ATG YouTube channel as well. Um, feel free to check out things there. Um, there's U chapter two. Liz posted a video of JavaScript um, from ours and hers. So you get double dose. Um, but always do not feel shameful of throwing in links here to your um, your resources. Resources, because again, this is all about pushing the community forward. Absolutely. So yeah, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts, and Michael and I have been fairly adamant about not learning them because when we're training or doing demos, and we use keyboard shortcuts, we forget to tell people we're using keyboard shortcuts. Mm -hmm. But if that's not your use case, by all means, learn these things. They can be customized. Um, so there is an option under the review menu to go customize your keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you do that, this document will not automatically update to reflect your customizations. <laughs> Fair warning. What? Really? Come on. Wouldn't that be cool, <laughs> though? Um but you can yeah. export it though to other people and import. That's it. true. Yeah. Good stuff. All His right. Suggestions at pluvium.com. Hey, we all heard that from Peter. What's mm -hmm. his last name? Peter Noyes. Noyes. I can never say it. That's why I always refer to Jason. Say it. Um, that they are going to be changing this for you to make it even better than what it was. But there is help make review better. What's this one? Get involved. User groups. Oh, user groups. Okay. We love bugs. I'm not just saying that. Angela's not on here today. But um, yeah, we are out of time. It's been another fun session for me. I hope you all had fun too. I hope you all learned something. We will see you next Tuesday, which will be the 13th. And uh, in the meantime, catch us over on LinkedIn. We've got a whole LinkedIn group for morning uh, coffee review. A topic, I'll post it over on LinkedIn. There we go. Yeah. There you go, Jason. Nice plug. Thank you all for joining us today. Again, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for all of you in the community. Uh, maybe we'll have another special at the end of the month if you didn't see Isaac's post for winning something amazing. 
So maybe get your skills refreshed as we get through this month and have another showdown. Mm, You got it. Take care.